How wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries in regards to a somewhat unusual object right here in the Milky Way galaxy. An object known as SGR 1806-20 that was first discovered back in 1979 by identifying an unusual type of gamma rays coming from its location. And while today we're pretty certain that this is a type of a neutron star known as a magnetar. But in this case, a very powerful magnetar, possibly even the most powerful we've ever seen, and its actual power was discovered almost exactly 20 years ago. And so here, let's actually briefly discuss what happened in 2004. And well, at the end of 2004, on November 20th, NASA launched this. The Swift Gamma Ray Burst Explorer, or essentially a telescope that was meant to study gamma ray bursts. Its main purpose was to try to capture as many gamma ray bursts as possible in order to understand their origin. But literally days after it started its mission, something really bizarre happened on board. For some unknown reason, the swift detectors suddenly became blinded for a few seconds by something that was not even visible to the telescope. It's as if the emissions were actually coming from somewhere else and were going through the walls of the spacecraft oversaturating the sensors, making this telescope completely blind for at least a few seconds. And at first this made absolutely no sense. And so it took a few months to discover what really happened. And well, it turns out that what the scientists observed was basically one of the most powerful explosions ever seen. Not the most powerful, because we had some other record breakers since then, and you can actually discover one of them that only happened a couple of years ago in one of the videos in the description, but here we had an extremely bright gamma ray super flare that actually showed an unusual pattern where it first became brighter and then dipped in brightness after approximately seven and a half seconds. And turns out that this was actually the result of the rotation of the magnetar, because in this case, the emissions came from this very bizarre object that was known to spin every 7.5 seconds. And because this explosion was so powerful, Swift Telescope was able to observe these emissions for at least 5 minutes. You can sort of see what the graph of this looks like in one of the studies in the description, but basically following an extremely bright peak, there was this unusual pulsation that you can see right here that occurred every 7.5 seconds, almost definitively confirming that this is a spinning object. And so it basically had an extremely bright and powerful spot pointing toward us that would basically be hidden every 7.5 seconds. And this was such a powerful event that it even affected the atmosphere of planet Earth. It physically compressed the magnetosphere and partially ionized the upper atmosphere, known as the ionosphere, changing certain chemical reactions and essentially leaving a mark. Now, if you watched that previous video from the event a couple of years ago, that event was even more powerful, even though it was much farther away. But in this case, the super flare from this magnetar basically showed us that if this event were to occur much closer to us, it would actually have dramatic effects on the planet, possibly even causing an extinction event. But luckily for us, this object was pretty far. This object is approximately 42,000 light years away from us, basically on the other side of the Milky Way. But as of today, it still seems to be the most magnetic object we've ever discovered, despite only being approximately 20 kilometers across. Very thorough investigations discovered that it has magnetosphere of approximately 10 to the power of 11 Tesla, which is trillions and trillions of times higher than what we have on planet Earth. But it was really this event that happened in 2004 that was kind of unusual, and it was not clear what caused it. Now at first it was assumed to be maybe some kind of a star quake, basically think of an earthquake, but in this case on top of a neutron star. And this event, in just one tenth of a second, seems to have released as much energy as the Sun in approximately 150,000 years. Not as powerful as a supernova, possibly at least 10,000 times less powerful, but powerful enough to be seen from planet Earth and basically one of the most powerful events ever observed. And intriguingly, if this were to happen much closer to us, within approximately 10 light years away from us, it would very likely completely destroy the atmospheric protection planet Earth has thus basically causing an extinction event. Luckily for us, we don't actually have these powerful magnetars anywhere close. The closest known magnetar is this object, and it's approximately 9,000 light years away. And so in that sense, we are pretty safe, at least for now. Although well, the chances are that maybe sometimes in the past, in the last 4.5 billion years of the existence of the planet, such an event might have actually occurred close enough to possibly affect planetary atmosphere. 
There's actually at least one extinction that we've discussed previously, I think there's a video in the description talking more about this, that might have been caused by something very similar. But over the years, while studying this magnetar, scientists discovered that it does actually seem to have an unusual period. It basically seems to increase its emissions every 400 days and seems to occasionally produce unusual X-ray bursts with a period of 398 days. Now, X-rays are not as powerful as gamma rays, but these unusual bursts seem to have a somewhat intriguing explanation. And so in one of the recent studies, Abdul Sadar Kurban and his team essentially tried to explain this by assuming that maybe this magnetar is not alone and potentially has a planet in its orbit. Now, neutron stars with planets are known to us. As a matter of fact, the first exoplanet ever discovered was around a neutron star, and so that by itself would not be unusual. But in this case, what's unusual is the orbit of this planet, because it seems to be directly responsible for these X-rays and possibly for this 2004 super flare. And so here the assumption is that this is possibly some kind of a relatively massive planet, maybe at least 10 masses of planet Earth, that orbits in a similar location to planet Earth, 1.18 AU away from the star, but with a very high eccentricity. Here the eccentricity would be close to about 0.994, or basically even higher than what you're observing in the simulation. It would basically resemble something like this. And as a result, it would approach the star really, really close, at which point it would be very likely tidally disrupted, or partially disrupted, with major fragments leaving the planet, and then essentially falling onto the surface of the magnetar and causing these enormous emissions. And so the collision of these infalling fragments would be responsible for these repeating X-ray bursts with these fragments generated every time the planet comes really close. In this case, we're talking about clumps between just a few kilometers to possibly 100 kilometers in size, essentially equivalent to a typical asteroid or a minor planet. Interestingly, extremely similar observations with a period of 238 days have also been seen around a very famous magnetar, also right here in the Milky Way galaxy, known as SGR-1931-2154. This magnetar became really famous because, a few years back, this was the first ever detection of fast radio bursts, or FRBs, coming from the Milky Way galaxy. And so it's quite possible that this other magnetar also has some kind of a planet in its orbit. And so assuming this explanation is correct, it means that the giant flare we've observed in December of 2004 may have been a result of an extremely large chunk of this planet basically colliding with the magnetar. And if correct, in order to produce these emissions, the object will have to be pretty massive, possibly several times the mass of Ganymede, the moon of Jupiter. So here we're talking about a really chunky object. And according to the study, this would be a relatively rare event, but could happen again. Mostly because it really depends on the size of the chunk that separates from the planet. And intriguingly here, they do actually compare this to something that we know happens around Jupiter. Because of volcanic eruptions from Io, that's actually also caused by tidal interactions, Jupiter also occasionally produces X-ray flares, possibly generated through a mechanism involving charged ions flowing into Jupiter's magnetic field and colliding with particles producing X-rays. Now, obviously, these emissions are much, much weaker, but overall the principle might be somewhat similar. Here, the interaction of the magnetic field of Jupiter with charged particles from Io basically produce X-rays, very often as a kind of a cone, only visible in a single direction. And so something similar potentially happens here as well, with the most powerful chunks basically producing gamma rays and not X-rays. But obviously, in order to confirm all of this, we would have to observe such an event one more time, or possibly observe it from some other magnetar somewhere out there. At least for now, this is still just a preliminary explanation, and chances are that for many years, this unusual super flare might still remain mysterious. But because in the last few decades, we've actually discovered over a thousand different gamma ray emissions from all over the place, there is a big chance that many of them were produced by very, very similar events. Basically, magnetars interacting with some kind of a planet and absorbing chunks of it once at a time. But once there are some additional explanations or some additional updates, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.